What's going on subscribers? Today we're working on the wide body wagon and basically just doing some buttoning up today. Um, trying to get the uh, kit basically fit exactly where it's got to go. So before we can actually do that, you got to add structure. Um, I had a couple footnotes on there on the side skirts in order to bring them up to get the actual body lines that I'm looking for. So long story short, went ahead and started stripping down the kit. I'm just in the uh, process of doing so now so that I can reinforce the side skirts and throw in some bracketry underneath there. Um, I'm also going to be doing some custom work on the, uh, the brackets underneath for the body mounts. Going to put a jack pad on there so that you have the ability to throw the jack underneath, not destroy these side skirts, and uh, yeah, go from there. So with that said, stay tuned. All right, so I've already gone through and measured everything out on this, so it's not like I'm running in the blind and I won't know my measurements for later. Um, I went ahead and I taped everything in place, basically so that I knew where I had to have my gaps. And, uh, you know, so I went from there. I was able to jump underneath the car, get my measurements, and then get a game plan on what I wanted to do for this car. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be super low, so throwing a jack underneath it is going to be pretty hard when the car is sitting on the ground and you can't see where you're jacking at because the side skirt blocks your view. So you got to think ahead. So jack pads are definitely a must on something like this. Um, even with an air ride kit, something that's going to be able to bring it up to the top you're still going to have an inability of seeing where you're going to jack at because of how far those side skirts came down. So with an aggressive kit like this, you need to prepare for it. You need to know these things. You can't just put them on, drive them down the road, think they're going to last, you know, get a flat tire, and then what? You're stuck on the side of the road and realize you can't get a jack underneath it and uh, you probably got to disassemble half of the kit because... The way it's designed is you're going to have to unbolt the side skirts, but before you can do that, this flare sits over the side skirt. So the fender has to come off, the or the fender flare has to come off, and then the side skirt has to come off in order for you to be even be able to access these rocker panels here. So I'm going to think ahead. I'm going to make it easy. It uh, shouldn't be hard. You know, something happens on the side of the road. You should have the ability to just grab the OEM jack out, throw it on a jack pad, have the visual of the jack pad, and not destroy you know what. So yeah, fun time. All right, so I removed the side skirt. The reason for doing so is because I need to reinforce the bottom section itself so I can run a bracket from the jack pad over to the side skirt to pull it out to have that body line that I just showed you guys earlier. So with that said, I went ahead and grabbed a big piece of plate steel. This is some really thick. It's probably a little over excessive. I'd say it's probably about, I don't know, 14, maybe 16 gauge. Um, it looks like it's about 14, but it's really thick. It's actually a shelving out of a snap-on toolbox. So if that gives you any idea, it'll hold some weight. So it's going to get donated. I've been using it for scrap whenever I need to do something pretty strong with it. And what's great about using something like this is it's powder coated on both sides. So as you can see, as I cut it, it doesn't distort the powder coating. And I can use this as a rust protective panel. That's what's great about this. So I can add a section of this into the bottom of the side skirt that I need. So all of this now will be metal on the inside. So then I'm later able to run hardware through the bottom, up through the bracket, all the way up to the jack pad, which is braced off of the body mount. So everything will be secure and uh, not move. I don't have to worry about 
having uh, some flexing issues and cracking and whatnot because a lot of guys old stool or excuse me old stool old school method is um, you will take a washer and then you'll resin mat over the top of the washer, drill a hole through it after the fiberglass is cured, and then run a, a bolt through it, you know, hardware and whatnot. But uh, nowadays, as time has gone by, I have realized that does not work. It just puts a lot of strain and stress in that area where that washer is, and the strongest point is that washer. So the best way to do it is to make the entire surface metal. So you are actually going to come through and start all the way where this curvature is here and then make this whole bottom plate metal so that when I put the singular bolt hardware here to push it out with the bracketry, I'm not putting strain and stress. It's able to disperse throughout the side skirt or throughout the metal panel. So you got to kind of think ahead. I got to make it structural. I got to make it to where... If he throws a jack underneath there and he accidentally misses and it kind of goes on there, it's not going to crack the crap out of it. And the best way to secure that is with a high strength panel bonder. Uh, you can use rivets. You can use any of that sort because the rivets themselves are going to sink into the steel a lot more than the fiberglass itself. So it's almost like a pancake that's you know holding itself on there. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and measure this out. Get some sheet steel in there, drill some holes, and get that support done. All right, so here, I've gone ahead and placed in the, uh, the plates. This is basically what it is, is I've gone up, cut out the shape, bent up both ends to give it a lot more rigidity, and more structure, and then I'm able to place in here on the edge and up again, you know, on this edge so that I can run the rivets through here for structure. And I know that this won't go anywhere because each side has been flapped up, given an extra structure for that edge. And, and basically, long story short, this is what I've achieved. I run all the rivets through. Um, I'm just going ahead. I'm not gonna rivet in place right now because of the sheer fact that you can see that there's imperfections in the side skirt so i've got to address that i've got to take care of all the body work and then once all the body work is taken care of and i know that this is in uh basically in paint stage when it's all completely painted then i can rivet that plate back on there so um after i cut it out i noticed that there was some delaminating of the uh, powder coating especially after i flapped up all the edges for some structure so i'm gonna end up hogging that down and just throw that thing in bed liner so i know that that thing is just completely coated and uh yeah i mean this is pretty easy to grind both sides and put it in bed liner and then rivet it on. It's pretty simple. So you, you just make it easy for yourself, but you plan for the future. So when it comes time to doing that, you say, oh yeah, that's over there. Grab the box of rivets and put it on. You know, so that's basically where you got to go with this. You need to plan it out because if I were to put these rivets on right now, and then I go to do the body work, I've got this much space in between the rivets to do all that body work and feather all of that so it doesn't make any sense. You're just going to basically drill the top heads of those rivets back off and pop them off and pop the plate off. It's just going to be in your way and you're going to be mad you put it on there. So plan things out and uh, be professional about it. If you need to make a list, do so. You know, checklists go a long way because visuals are everything. They really are. Um, not only that, you come in the next day, you may not remember exactly where your time frame or mind frame was yesterday so you can easily jump back into pace of the day before by knowing where you left off with the checklist so i recommend checklists always you know write things down um, another thing i do as well is as i do it i'll make a checklist you know i do usually do it in my head but a good thing to do for people that are learning is write things down that are already done so you know exactly what's already been done you're not having to go back to waste time to see if it was done. Hey, did I do that? Checklist says we did. So that's basically a good way of uh, coming up. I did that when I was younger. So um, yeah, long story short, 
I'm gonna go ahead and replicate over here to this side skirt. I'll make this one look the same. It's a lot easier when all the holes are pre-drilled. This will all be body work. This whole panel will be painted. That way it's all placed on. Put the plate on, rivet it in place, call it a day, and then uh, I'm able to add the structure bar over. So what I'm doing is I got a little bit of creative here. Um, I like to reuse and uh, recycle, restore, whatever the, the word is that tickles your fancy. But long story short, uh, a lot of people don't know what this is, but uh, some Subi guys do. You know, you, you you would absolutely probably look at this and go, I know what that is, but most people have no clue what this is. This is actually a Subaru part. This came off of a Subaru. This goes in your trunk. It goes to your deck lid. So there's actually two of these torsion bars that run underneath, and then they have torsion on them. And this is the torsion end that is twisted up underneath the deck lid. So that's what gives your deck lid spring is actually one of these rods on both ends. So it has one on this end, you flip it over, has one on this end, and then that are attached and they're attached to the arms basically that hold the uh, the deck lid on. So I I go through and I'll take apart all the cars before they're unsalvageable because guys there are cars that I can't bring back that it would take too much money to bring it back and at that point in time it's just if you're rebuilding half the car or the whole car it better be pretty sentimental to you so i'm going to reuse this i'm going to use it for some brackets um it's basically just some basic rod so i'm going to use that for the diagonal portion to push the side skirt out and get it to the door so i can get the adequate gap that i want all you got to do is pretty easy it's flat washer flat washer. This will bolt to the body mount. This will bolt to the inside of the side skirt. Kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, so now that we got the plating all done for the side skirts, we know that the structure is going to be there for the brackets to actually push the side skirt where I want it to be to achieve the body lines. Now it's time to move over to those brackets and start manufacturing them. And uh, because they're not just gonna make themselves. So long story short, I'm gonna go ahead and explain my process of what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm actually going to make some bump stops here that are going to uh, go on. Actually, I'll show you right over here. This is the best way to do it, or best way to do it is, this is going to be how the plating is for the body mount. You normally right here, you'll have the, uh, the rubber bushing that sits here and then you've got the actual shell of the car that sits on the rubber bushing here. So what I'm going to do essentially is weld it in place. That way you can still access all of the hardware all the way around with uh, you know sockets and whatnot. You gotta be able to get to this and have it accessible. So that would basically sit there in the, uh, the same depth and even with the bottom of the side skirt itself so that I can run the brackets diagonally from the hardware to the actual bottom of the side skirt because all of this will be plated with steel. And that's the only way to get the bottom of that side skirt to actually be rigid enough to put it where I want it and not move, not flex, because as you drive down the road, the car itself flexes, you know? So long story short, that's basically how I'm gonna be working with that. Um, over here, the reason why the, uh, the square stock is stuffed in here is because I'm going to cut it off here, you know, three inches. I'll run the bead on both sides. I'll make it pretty strong and then I'll insert it in, run the bead inside so that this is very strong. And then over here, I've already measured out the, uh, the hole saw, you know, so that way all I got to do is hole saw some holes out. These are going to be my caps. I'll be able to throw those on there. And this will be a really strong jack point because I know that it's exactly flush with the actual side skirt itself. And I don't have to worry about the jack going underneath and anybody jacking on this because they actually have a jack point. Not only that, this car is going to be airbagged. It will slam down and these side skirts are already a lot deeper than the average side skirt. So because of that, I need to have an insurance that this car isn't gonna slam down and sit on fiberglass. You know, because of that, I need 
rigid steel for this car to sit on the ground. So we're going to give the illusion that the car is sitting on the side skirts. It's sitting on steel. So we'd be able to actually lay pavement with a Subaru. So with that said, I think that's pretty sweet. So I'm Bill Schneider. This is Rumble Garage. I work on only cars with the stars. Subaru only. Duh.